Welcome to My Favorite Drum Gear. I'm Brady. A couple weeks ago, I got a hold of Lemon's two-piece hi-hat system for my electronic drums. I've completed a review of them, and in the course of that review, it came to light that I was really doing something wrong. See, Roland's VH13 two-piece hi-hat system isn't made to work with my module, the TD-17. So it stands to reason that Lemon's two-piece hi-hat isn't either. Roland says that their two-piece systems only work with the TD-27, the TD-30, and the TD-50 and 50X. But I decided to ignore all of that and see if I could get Lemon's two-piece hi-hat system to work on a TD-17 model. I did, I was ultimately successful, and you can watch a review of the performance of this two-piece symbol in the other video that I'm linking to now. So now we're gonna take a look at what it takes to dial in Lemon's two-piece hi-hat system on your TD-17 module. Before we can understand how to dial this in for a TD-17, we've got to understand what each of the three main components are and how they function. The start is the bottom of the Lemon two-piece hi-hat system. What you have is simply a piece that sits on top of your hi-hat stand, threads your rod through like this, and has a plunger. The plunger has a sensor or a switch in the bottom that lets you know exactly when it hits the closed and then as it travels along makes your hi-hat sound more open. Because it's easier to demonstrate without the bottom symbol in the way, I'm going to use this for demonstration purposes. The next component is your hi-hat clutch. Lemon sends you a fairly long hi-hat clutch that comes with a rotation stopper. The rotation stopper simply keeps the symbol, the top symbol, from rotating around as you're playing. Now their clutch contains a felt washer and two lock washers that help position the top symbol exactly where you need it. Finally, the third component, the lemon symbol. This is a little over 12 inches. It's a dual zone symbol. It's got a piezo switch sensor on the edge and a regular piezo on the bow. In order for these hi-hats to function properly, what needs to happen is that the top hi-hat needs to close on the bottom hi-hat right when this plunger hits the fully closed sensor. Now the way to make that happen is to have your hi-hat spaced perfectly from your bottom hat and your top hat so that when this plunger hits the closed sensor, the two hats come perfectly together. This is the first issue that I ran into when it comes to Lemon's product. There needs to be an adjustment along the clutch from where the bottom of the clutch lies in relationship to the top hi-hat so that the second that you have pressed in that plunger fully, you have the two hi-hats fully meeting each other. If there's any gap, playing the hi-hat will cause unintended triggering as it bangs around. Likewise, if there's not enough gap, your cymbals will be completely pressed, but the plunger is not pressed all the way down, and you'll get an open hi-hat sound. The problem comes with this rotation stopper. The rotation stopper needs to sit level with the bottom of the clutch so that it can press the plunger correctly. However, it also needs to be spaced up and down well enough so that those two symbols come together right as this plunger is fully depressed. That means that you need to be able to alter the height of this, which obviously is not possible. That led to me simply scrapping their clutch and using the hi-hat clutch that came with my hi-hat. So what I've done is taking apart my regular hi-hat clutch and I'm taking a single piece from the lock washer and putting it upside down. Think of a top hat and I'm threading that all the way to the top of my clutch. Then I'm using the felt that came with Lemon's hi-hat clutch. Next I'm going to put the hi-hat on followed by another felt washer, the second piece from my lock washer, and finally the bottom of the clutch. Now imagining that my finger were the symbol, what this does is allow me to move the lock washers up and down along the clutch to change the relationship between the bottom of the clutch and the hi-hat itself. That should give me the perfect spacing to ensure that when the plunger is fully depressed, the two symbols are coming together and meeting correctly. Now that we understand the importance of this relationship, let's move on to the bottom hi-hat. Be sure that both hi-hat cables are secured to the hi-hat stand. You can do this however you want. 
But understand that the weight of an unsecured cable can tilt the bottom hat and cause unexpected issues, and also letting the cables jiggle at the input port can cause triggering. So if the symbol is mounted too high on the clutch, you'll see that every time you stomp your foot, it reads multiple times. That's because the top symbol is actually banging around some on top of the bottom. By comparison, if the hi-hat sits too low on the symbol, the two hats will meet before the plunger has time to fully engage, meaning that you'll never be able to get a full-on closed hi-hat sound. You'll know you found the sweet spot in that relationship because the hi-hat will actually start to feel right. Also, when you go into the hi-hat settings, you'll notice that the hi-hat will close fully right where you want it to, and with a little bit of extra force, you'll be able to push it below that hi-hat calibration number, and you'll get the sound of a tight hi-hat. Now the next thing to listen for, and this is personal preference because you can actually do it on a normal acoustic hi-hat, listen for a sound of the top hi-hat when you completely release your foot off of the pedal. There's a tiny sound that happens sometimes. If you'd prefer to be rid of that sound, just lower the clutch a little bit so that it rests just barely on the top of the plunger of the lower piece. At this point, your hi-hat should be physically set up and ready for you to play. Now we'll get into the module itself and see what adjustments need to be made to make sure it's as accurate as possible. First, you'll probably notice that with a foot strike or a bow strike, the module registers multiple hits. However, with an edge strike, you get a single hit. The goal here is to tweak our adjustments so that every time we hit the bow or our foot, we get a single hit. So if we look, when I hit the edge, I have one hit. When I close, I get at least one. When I hit the bow, I'm getting one. So I'm going to take the threshold up just a little. And now we seem to be getting a single hit every time I close my foot or play the bow. Now we want to make sure that the crosstalk and sensitivities are right between bow hits and edge hits. The easiest way to do this is to make sure that head and rim are turned off, any subwaves are turned off, and then to separate the two sounds into things that are decidedly not hi-hat sounds. Maybe a clap and a triangle. What we're effectively listening for is any sound of a triangle or bow hit where we should only hear an edge hit, or vice versa. Keeping in mind that when you fully close the hi-hat, you will hear a bow hit sound. One other thing I ran into was a double triggering on a really hard stomp if my foot was pulled back toward the heel plate of the hi-hat pedal. The simple fix for this was to either keep my foot choked up on the top of the pedal or to lower the clutch just slightly onto the top of the plunger. Ultimately, here are the settings I ended up for in the module. I had the hi-hat set as a VH11. Now keep in mind that your mileage will vary on all of these basic and advanced settings. But for me, the sensitivity around 9 and the threshold all the way up at 20 is what kept those multiple hits from triggering when I stopped my foot down on the actual foot pedal. A scan time of 4 milliseconds. I don't know if this is necessary or not, but it's where I landed. Uh, a mask time of 8. Uh, retrig cancel I don't think I touched. And the crosstalk uh, went up to 14. I don't think I messed with anything on the uh, rim settings. There wasn't really anything going on there. Uh, the rim gain basically is just the volume of your edge strikes, which I thought were fine. And then finally, the hi-hat settings themselves. I found that I got uh, the best overall feel by taking the hi-hat sensitivity all the way down to the bottom. Again, this might be a starting place for you. It might not. Uh, see what feels good for you. So I've now dialed this in three times, reset all the settings, done it over again. And the thing that I found is that the physical setup of the hi-hat is much more important than the settings in your module. 
making sure that the hi-hat relationship between where the hi-hat sits on your clutch so that it hits that plunger right when the hi-hats close is the most important thing to get a good hi-hat feel. On top of that, making sure that the controller, that bottom hi-hat, is set level and is not jiggling uh, and not pulling on your cables is pretty important. And then finally, when you get into dialing in the settings, just take your time and really listen for those multiple hits that you're trying to eliminate. Hopefully this video has helped you and you understand now that you can use a two-piece hi-hat system, specifically Lemon's two-piece hi-hat system for your TD-17 and quite possibly other modules. Which leads me to this. If you have tried this two-piece hi-hat system with a different, uh, be it Yamaha, Alesis, Roland module, uh, please comment below. Let me know how it worked. Let me know if this video helped you. Let me know if you've run into additional problems. I'm happy to try and help troubleshoot. And of course, like and subscribe, remembering that if I get to a thousand subscribers, I'm going to get a hold of Lemon's top of the line drum set and module, and I'm going to do a full thorough review so we all know if that's something that we might want to own. Thanks for watching.